So the video you all guys have been waiting for on how a combine works. So I will try not to bore you, but still go into detail of certain things. And I'll try to explain roughly on how a combine like this works. This right here is an Amadas 9960 peanut combine. It says it right there. Mo the most common question that I get asked is why is there a green cab on a blue combine? Well, I talked to a guy at John Deere and he explained it to me that Amadas Peanut Company, the company that builds combines like this, what they had done, they had signed a contract with John Deere and they had bought all the cabs, engines, the transmission, etc., all the I guess all the, the essential engine parts, I guess you could say. They bought all that stuff from John Deere and put it on their combine. John Deere gave them permission to put all their technology on their combine since Amadas is not an engine company or anything like that. So they bought all that stuff from John Deere. And so that's basically what this is. The engine itself is, I think only like 150 to 200 horsepower engine. It's anyways very small. It's, it does not have a lot of horsepower. But anyways, on the combine side of things, you have this header right here. This is an eight row header, 24 feet wide. We recently put these bands on here, but basically you have these fingers right here. Peanuts come underneath here, fingers pick them up, bring them over to that auger. The auger will bring it to the middle and bring it to these rolls back here, which there's also fingers in here explain more a little bit about the fingers the fingers for where it thrashes itself it has five different rolls and if i climb up here you'll see here's the fifth roll and basically every roll interlocks or intertwines with each other the previous roll those fingers will come right here in between here and when you see, say you put a stick here, when these fingers come here, it basically breaks all the twigs, breaks all the peanuts off of the plant, and you get left with just peanuts and lots of broken straw. So it basically brings it from the front up to here, just continues to thrash it. And then once it gets to the back here, you can see there's another set of fingers right there there's another couple of rolls. Those rolls, if I climb down here, climb in the back. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but right here's where the fingers are in. These are just the bottom shields. It comes up there. Those fingers that are in there, they basically bring all the straw out the back. The peanuts themselves, let me just get my phone out for a light that you'll be able to see. There you go. So basically, the rest of the stuff that, the, that these fingers up here, whatever they do not get, falls down here. Peanuts will fall down in between these little holes here everywhere. And these, what we call, or, or, I forgot, actually, I forgot what they were called. Oh, disc separator, that's what they are. These will take the rest of the straw and throw it out the back. So when it gets too humid and peanuts have a little bit of a tail on them, these grooves and everything kind of grabs the peanuts and throw them out the back. That's why you can't harvest whenever it's a little bit humid. Basically, this separates the rest of the peanuts from the twigs. And then all the twigs and everything just basically comes out the back, slides down, and out the back. So that's basically how the combine itself works, which it's not too complicated. It's, it's actually quite simple. So, actually, I gotta get on that side for this. Where the peanuts go after they get separated from all the straw, when you come up here, there's an auger right here at the bottom. It brings it from in there, it augers it all to this side. And there's a fan right here that's driven by the engine. This fan blows air through the chute and 
went up the chute and right there into that hole into the basket. From the basket, you got this nice unload conveyor. Not all of them have these, but we wanted the ones with conveyors on them. So we actually, back 15 years ago, whenever we bought these combines, we got the ones with uh, unload, offload conveying system. We got them with this setup to where we could just unload on the go. So they have a conveyor from the basket that will unload onto our buggies. So that's basically the combine in a nutshell. Uh, I'll do a slight walk around where you kind of see the combine a little more. If I think of anything else to explain, I'll try to do my best. But if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comment section down below and I will try my best to answer them. I don't know, it's not very complicated. Oh, another question I get asked, could you harvest beans or other types of plants with this machine? Not really. This machine is simply made just for peanuts. So if you're wondering if you can harvest anything else with these types of machines, no, you can't. This is simply just for peanuts. Oh, if you're wondering why there's a yellow rim, a couple years ago, I think two, three years ago, we had a rim crack on us and we were in the middle of the field, kind of in a hurry. We couldn't get another gray rim. They only had a yellow rim in stock. So we we're like, yeah, I guess we'll take the yellow rim. We've been kind of wanting to paint it because it looks kind of ugly having one yellow rim and four gray rims or three, three gray rims. But I would like to paint it, but I don't know if we ever will. Oh, how it's all driven. There's chains everywhere. There's countless chains. There's one right there. There's chains there. If I go open this back door right here. Oh, all sorts of dusty. You can see there's lots of chains. Everything is driven by chains. So yeah, that's basically it. Hope you enjoyed this little walk around of the peanut combine. Like I said, put any other questions in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Oh, by the way, uh, the main power comes from the engine onto the drive shaft and it's past the U-joints and then there's this variable drive. This right here has a nice cylinder on here so you can, or this will actually adjust up and down and that'll change the speed of the combine to where you can thrash harder or softer, basically slow and speed down the thrashing speed of the combine. And then that right there, once this right here adjusts it, but up here is a shaft that goes through out to the backside and that's where the first chain comes from and it basically connects back and forth. So like there'll be a chain on that side that drives a different sprocket and that sprocket is a bar coming out all the way to the back which drives this one. This one drives all these. And on that side, for all these in the middle here, this sprocket, the bar on that side will connect with the chain to this one and this one and so on and so forth. So they, there's always, there's bars going through the combine connecting all the chains together to where everything drives the way it should. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching guys. So I just realized as I was editing this video, and yes, I am editing while harvesting peanuts as we currently are. I realized I didn't really show the inside of the cab. So here's a little tour on the inside of the cab. It's pretty straightforward. Up here you have all your main controls, you have your air conditioning here, all your lights, radio that I never use, a bunch of sensors, lights that go off, my peanut basket is full, uh, anything else for the engine itself, and then here is anything for the combine for the thrashing speed or anything like that, and all your other basic sensors and whatnot. And then here on the right you just have your normal little screens, this one's for the header. 
This one's for anything that the John Deere really needs to do for their calibrations and uh, if they need us service codes or whatever, if codes pop up, they use this whole thing and we never use that. And then this one displays anything I want it to display, like fuel, temperature, my speed. Right now I have this one set to my uh, fan speed that blows the peanuts into the basket. And then this one is my header speed, which I have that one set to 90, 100 right now. So that basically is just your main dial that I always look at. And then we have right here, which is the gear gear system or the gear knob it has three gears. I personally hate this with a passion. Uh, you stick it in the third gear and you absolutely have no power whatsoever. But we always leave it in second unless you need to get on the road and do long trips and you'll stick it in the third. So other than that, you don't really notice the power in second and second it has still good power. But in your handle here, this is the so normal style old, old handle that they've had for years. Header right here, lift up the basket and lift, put it back down. Presets right here for my header, my auger in and out, and to turn on my auger, uh, or not auger, my conveyor to unload the peanuts. And then emergency shut off right there. Got the header switch right here, and this is the calm line one. And I can make small adjustments here. This right here is supposed to be for GPS, but it just doesn't do anything. You can mess with that button all day long, doesn't do nothing. But you can then adjust your header, adjust your combine speed, and adjust your fan speed. We do I did also put our own little radio system in there. So that's what this whole cable is. That's for my two-way. You also have your hard brake and your other brakes, which also I never use. Yeah, that's the inside of the combine. Not to mention these switches here, which we put in here ourselves. These are for all my lights. I have three different switches. Uh, this one's for my light bar. This one's for my header lights. And then this one's for my conveyor lights. And then the not the radio that I use, but that's the radio I use. There goes the sensor. Peanut bin is full. You can see right there. So now I'm waiting for a buggy, so I'll just stop right here. This is the radio I use. This is just a random little speaker that I picked up at Walmart that's Bluetooth. So I can connect my phone to this and play my music if I want to. And then I just have a charging cord plugged into this piece right here. So I, it's, always, it's always charged and I can just turn it on and then Bluetooth my phone to it. So at least I have that speaker.